Hey guys, it's Tyler with TCG Rewind. Today we're doing yet another reaction. History of Jank number 54. Simo and MBT are still playing decks from my website, tcgrewind.com, and of course playing in the great September 2011 format, which is in fact the best retro format in existence. If you haven't played it, go play it because uh, you will agree. It's, it's incredible. Um, that being said, uh, we're going to be reacting to their gameplay, you know, uh, as, as I always say, uh, we're doing this with the intention to kind of teach you guys a bit of how to like play some of these decks a bit better or even understand the 2011 format a bit better, not necessarily to just flame SEMO and MBT for their bad plays, although that does kind of happen, you know, but it's, it's not really to make fun of them. It's more to, you know, help, help everyone learn how they can play a bit better. Um, I'm excited to kind of see this episode because I, I know they're playing Psychics from the thumbnail and, uh, Psychics is a banger of a deck. It's one of my favorites in 2011, actually. So, um, let's hop right into it. Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles if or you want 5% off. Well, folks, we are just about ready to say goodbye Ooh. forever to 2011 and 2012 Yu-Gi-Oh! Jank. We've Wait. been a little bit inactive. No! <laughs> Don't say goodbye to ever. God, this, this is like 50% of my channel's content right now, you know? I, I, I need you guys to keep playing decks from my website, all right? And, and if not, then guys, uh, put something in the comments. You know, let me know if there's any other stuff you want me to react to. Um, I've been having a really busy schedule, so reaction content's kind of nice. I think it's a lot of fun, you know, you know, look at what, what other people got going on for uh, different retro formats, stuff like that. But mostly 2011, you know, because uh, th this, this is the best one to, to look at, uh, invest your time into. But, yeah, let, let me know in the comments. Also, guys, subscribe. We're getting close to 500 subs. Um let's reach that goal you know it's been kind of a rough week so you know give give your boy that that support drop drop a drop a sub uh get, and help me get to that 500 goal but anyway we'll keep on we'll keep anachronistic on. during this period but it was all in the name of comedy that said i think we would be remiss if we left this period without playing some of the most powerful cards that no one really ever explored true the psychics now we've talked about psychics on history of Yu-Gi-Oh already you may remember the mind master ftk that was legal for all of a couple of days, and you might also remember Jeff Jones's historic September of 2012 list that included Grand Soil the Elemental Lord to reborn a bunch of psychics over the Grand course Soil of your turn. So nuts Serene the Psychic deck. Witch is the card that made the latter deck tick, and it was legal way earlier, just unbroken. There are a lot of really powerful psychics at the start of the 5Ds era, including cards like Silent Psychic Wizard that would be breathed new life into during the battle pack format, and Esper Girl, a tuner that pluses you. Unfortunately, they never really saw any competitive success, but we are going to do our best to wrench. So honestly, I think this deck didn't see a lot of competitive success at the time because I think almost no one really even tried to experiment with it. Like, I feel like... I put this deck as tier one on my tier list. I think this deck is insanely strong. Like if you just look at the build, like maybe this one could be optimized a bit more. Um, but at the end of the day, like every card in this deck is a floater and you get synchros without having to use your normal summon and maxi like doesn't affect this deck hardly at all. So like it just makes this deck feel so incredibly strong. Like for example, if you, uh, banish an Esper Girl off of Witch, then on your on your standby phase when it comes back, you can special summon Esper Girl, um, to, and then banish a card face down, and then off that special summon, you can summon a Warwolf, and then you can make something like a Wonder Magician, pop a back row, add that card, and then the Wonder Magician replaces itself by drawing a card, and as a level 5 tuner, it's just kind of crazy, right? Like that, or you can just make your, like, Magical Android right there, um, and then that sets up the Miracle Synchro Fusion, because honestly, Ultimate Axon Kicker is a crazy nutso card. Um, some people feel like you have to play suboptimally to do this, where you kind of make, like, you know, Magical Android or something like that, maybe even Thought Ruler over a more optimal Synchro. But for the most part, in my experience of playing it, I never really ran into an issue with making that caller decision. It, it honestly felt pretty fine. Um, 
but yeah, the, this deck is just, it, it's nuts. It's so good. Also, Psychic Jumper is like one of the most underrated cards in this entire deck. Like, it's just like a creature swap for Psychics, and when you get a Banish a monster and it comes out on the next standby phase, then like if your opponent swings into a witch and you get jumper and have another witch in hand, it just feels so good. It's actually crazy. One drop of playability out of these monsters. Serene Psychic Witch is almost a recruiter, and the ways in which she's not a recruiter are all benefits. She summons during your standby phase, so your opponent can't spend a removal spell on the monster that you bring out. High impact monsters like Destructotron that absolutely have to live get to do so, and she can summon Esper Girl, a tuner that pluses you when she sinks off. We're going to use this slew of monsters alongside two other ones. First, a card that dominated much of 2011 and 2012, Yu-Gi-Oh! Reborn Tengu, and secondly, some cards that are fantastic in an archetype that just needs additional bodies on board, the TGs. Warwolf and Striker are both free special summons under different conditions and can make powerful synchro monsters with non-tuners on the field or be the non-tuner themselves. Themselves. I'm really excited to try this deck out. I want to show you just how deep a Serene Psychic Witch line can go. Maybe, just maybe, we'll get to resolve Miracle Synchro Fusion and hype. make ourselves an ultimate Axon Kicker. So with that, let's that get into the card so by card. We're on three sides. Right, we don't need the card by card. Yeah, it seems like MET actually understands uh, this deck a bit more. Probably because it's just so similar to the Grand Soil Psychics, but you yeah. know. Jeff Jones's Grand Soil Psychics, but hopefully it's good enough to get us a W. You might be yeah, a bit confused for this week's episode of History of Jank. Joseph's playing Psychics. I'm on Rock Stun. Both of these decks actually look quite competent in all fairness, but these decks were nowhere near as playable as people might think that they were. There are bits and pieces. So I actually ran I, my locals back in the day. I saw Rock Stun win a lot randomly. Like I, I didn't think this deck is that bad. I do think Psychics is way better. Like, I didn't put Rocks on at Tier 1. I put it, like, Tier 1.5. I do think there, like, might be a better build, though. Like, th this is, like, a, an old build I just kind of threw together just to, you know... Most of the builds on my website are there as, like, examples, but not necessarily the most optimal way to play a deck. Just to be there so you guys can kind of see and, like, have something to start when you download it to, like, try and build off of, right? Because solidarity is a really powerful card but there's there's a world where you don't need solidarity right like it, at the end of the day most of these guys are beaters the nice thing about solidarity is it makes fossil dina big and when you have big fossil dina then you're practically normal summoning christias and that's really crazy um but yeah for the most part i i think this deck is really cool and and honestly not that bad um, it just has, it's just a bit more difficult to pull off because you you need to see like, hey, I need to see Guardian or like uh, one of these Quacky Mirus, and then I need to see um, a Rock to reveal and back row. So like, it's like having that contingency to make it work um, can sometimes be difficult. So like you're, you're almost prone to clogging because you almost need to have a higher monster count. But Fossil Dynas Flip Effect to blow up special summon monsters means it actually has really nice recovery plays too. So eh, it's not that bad pieces of playability here, but it all falls short in the hands of what is actually the better decks of this time. And so Rockstun is a deck that is very easy to play. And I think if you were getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh around this time, very affordable, very cheap, and a True. very simple deck to play. So it doesn't require much thinking because it's a stun deck. But at the end of the day, man, this deck fucking sucks. So some of you may actually recognize some of these cards. Kwaki Mirror Guardian, for instance, saw tons of play in Ad Emancipator, but that's because Kwaki Mirror Guardian might be the only good card we're actually playing in this deck. The the main goal of our deck here is to sort of lock down the game with the Quacky Meru cards, but also a card like Fossil Dyna Pachycephalo, which is also a rock monster that prevents your opponent and yourself as well from being able to special summon. So being able to have these out with a card like Solidarity, for instance, which buffs all of your monsters by 800 attack, makes it a bit difficult for them to actually win the game because you can lock down their monster effects, their trap effects, their spell effects, as well as their ability to special summon. So the game ends very quickly. Now, there are some issues with that, but we'll get to that later on. Let's do the card by card. So first up, Fossil Dyn Apache stuff. All right, we don't need the card by card. Honestly, he's probably underrating Boulder. Uh, I feel like this card's like one of the solutions to this deck because the nice thing about it is it's a recruiter, right? So in hand, it's a rock you can reveal. Outside of that, you can set it and search whichever one of these big boys you want, um, which is nice because it kind of makes the deck feel a bit more toolbox, right? Like 
uh, at the end of the day, like if my opponent's playing hella monsters, then I want to get gar- I want to get guardian. Um, but if they have something like Sandman, or if they have like a bunch of traps, then I want Sandman. Or if it's like a spell heavy deck, then you want wall, right? So like, you have something for each situation. So it's nice to just kind of set this, and then they also you can like set this turn one, search the Quacky Mirror you want, and then flip a Solidarity and just have like a massive twenty seven hundred beater on your next turn, which is really cool. Buffalo, a sm- like essentially a heavy core from your deck to your hand but surprise we're not playing the core because the monster in your hand the card. we also have one oh grand gosh, talks so long. and two zen maester to be fair we could maybe summon here it's time to there duel. we go well joseph we're back to some semi playable decks in history of jank right i mean i think that term's a little bit loosely used here Back to some semi-play, bro, every deck they've been playing this whole time for my website is playable. It's the whole reason it's there. You know, they, they're actually, like, fine. <laughs> you just gotta be good at them. But uh, I think compared to what we're gonna be playing next episode, these are much more playable ki- by comparison. <laughs> uh, it's really funny to me uh, that you're saying that, and, um, I mean, I, f- I feel like every deck that we've played has been playable in its own way. Thank right? you, MBT. I mean, no. you, you don't I, think that you don't think the Ice Bears? Do not bring up Ninjas. You don't think the if you bring up you don't Slifer, think... You know, maybe... All right, Slifer Ninjas was not from my website. That that deck's, like, sussy, because Slifer is kind of a dog card, but... Ice Barriers, they, they slept on. I, I know for a fact they played that deck bad, because I actually think Ice Barriers are not bad in this format. I think they're pretty good. Slifer Ninjas <laughs> was a more apt matchup for the Ice Barriers. Yeah, maybe we have maybe. to do like a redo of that. We'll do a best uh, of Jank and then uh, never release it. You, you all are People really go. love that episode, though, in all fairness. Wild. So, you know, maybe we, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we revisit Ice Barriers like towards the end of Jank just because they get the structure deck and the deck still sucks. But in any case, we're not talking about Ice Barriers. We are talking about R2 decks, which oh, yeah. I'm just ready to get into it, buddy. Uh, this is going to be maybe interesting, but I'm also playing the deck that requires no thinking. So we'll see how it goes. Let's go ahead and shout the patron. It is Nicholas Tardive. Thank you for the support, buddy. Do you have the hand up? Oh, I do. My die says even. It is even. It was two, uh, as in the number of psychic monsters I need on field to make an actually good card. Well, to be fair, your cards are probably much better than mine, in all fairness. But eh, actually, that's I was going to say, you, the... you liar! You're playing cards that were an Ad Emancipator last year! That's true. That's a really good hand. Like, this hand looks nuts. You can basically, like, duality, set four, probably, pass, with, like, set boulder. It's pretty good. True. But that doesn't mean that they're necessarily good uh... without the Ad Emancipator <laughs> core to support them. But we'll see. Best of luck, buddy. Uh, I hope you have not looks... found a core to support them, if you know what I'm saying. I hope that you are coreless. <laughs> ha ha ha. Very funny. Uh, Bro, play I duality first. All okay, I'm going to okay. do is fire pot of duality. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh that's uh, insane. Best card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, trap dust shoot. Gotta Epic. love them. Who needs Sandman? Cards for cowards. All right, and then we're going to go set one. A two, three, four, five. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! during this time. Don't you, buddy? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> yeah, see, there is a punish to set in all your back row, which is why it's nice. Um, let's look at his hand. Okay. I mean, his hand's honestly nuts, too. Both hands are really, really good because, like, this is, like, ideal. It, the nice thing about this deck is, like, you usually want to see the witch, right? And so he's going to get rid of the witch, which does suck. That That's, like, less than ideal. But if you have the TG engine... You're kind of chilling that, and you have Emergency Teleport, which is probably the best card in this deck. It, it just has so many versatile uses, especially with a card like Jumper, or um, even things like, uh, what's his name? Psychic Commander. Psychic Commander has like that damage step effect, which is actually weirdly relevant a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, I, I, this hand's really nuts. He's going to force the Solemn, which is nice. Uh, luckily, Simo doesn't have Starlight Road set, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um... And you have duality, and you. This hand's crazy. This is nuts. This hand's it's unbelievable. So I get to go E Telly oh Warwolf. I get to normal Serene Psychic Witch. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Uh, not good. What I hate is that again, endless conga line of assholes. All of these things just fucking float. Yep. 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 They brought it back. I guess I will get rid the of endless conga line of witch. assholes. They don't censor it. I guess I'd rather it. like make you E Telly like her back out or something, which you would probably just get a tuner anyway. But yeah, get rid of the witch. Sadly, uh, that's fine. That that is probably the pick. All right, we'll go to main, and at least we can get a judgment off here. 
Correct. All right. Uh, well, now I don't know what I want to do. Um, because if you have a way to remove the war wolf, the monster will be banished and then just out of guise. So I'm actually just gonna duality. We're looking nice. for that witch again. Ooh. Did you I'm shuffle checking. Joseph Rothschild? <laughs> I did. I did. Holy oh, my shit. God. Holy. Well, there are three in the deck, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay, so it's not improbable that that would happen, all but right. uh, still crazy nonetheless that it was the top card. All right, all right. Here you got your is. witch back. God, I uh, love I'm this thinking card. here. Yeah, witch is. If he's reading the D prison, then I actually think it's better to summon the Warwolf. You definitely want Witch to stick. If you're trying to swing in, I, th I think it might be better to summon Warwolf, uh, just because of that factor. Um, Fine. Woo! All right. Uh, let's go to combat. I'll try to get it. All right. It is Kwaki Meru Boulder. Damn. This has to be the worst <laughs> of the fucking. Why did they play this card? I do not understand. Uh Sleeping on Boulder. I'm telling you, look, look at the position this puts him in. He literally gets to search Guardian right now. And he can just slam Guardian, swing over that Witch, and one for one Witch, which is like best case scenario. Like, that's insane. Oh, I will grab, well, fuck, if I know you have Mirror Force, like, maybe I just fucking get Sandman now. It doesn't do anything, though. Like, it doesn't, like, negate, it negates it, but I have to sack the Sandman, True. so it effectively does the same thing. I'll just take Guardian, whatever. That's fine. Uh, it's it's going to eat a Mirror Force no matter what I do. I'm going to go so. main two. I'm going to go one, two, and then I'll pass it back. All right. e -telly and uh mirror force fantastic all right well i will go kawaki meru guard i guess i should have specified that if he didn't have mirror force this card's nuts but still uh it definitely forces mirror force which i think is kind of nice too yeah let's eat the mirror force yes you will okay Fantastic. Uh, that was a productive turn. Go ahead. I'll draw for turn. Battle. Sure. Why? I'll take it. E telly. Am I just dead here? If you let no, the e there's nothing resolve. you can e telly for twenty six. That would be that would be kind of yeah. Crazy. No, and you've got I don't know what he's e telly for. Warwolf is lethal. I think I'm warning this. Oh. Yeah, he didn't have to do that. I guess I should have normaled Warwolf. Okay. Uh, we'll go main two. Uh, I'll just set one, and you are good to go. Well, hey! I have another guardian. That's pretty good. It's not bad. I'll take out the witch. All right, I'm gonna try it. I can negate this, but I'm I'm so fucked if I negate this. Ugh. Yeah, it's actually a tough spot to be in. Ideally, you do want to negate that because the card advantage he's gonna get off of it is so great. Almost might have been better for him not to attack the witch that turn and swing into the set TG. Because then, worst case, MBT's next play is normal summon a striker and then synchro for five, and then you can just fiendish chain it. Um, and at the very least, you'd still have your guardian. But yeah, I don't really agree with attacking this if you're not gonna, if you're not able to one for one. Like, you technically could like gamble by just having fiendish chain block the attack of the Warwolf, but in reality, I think it's better just not to attack it this turn and then set a Fossil Dine on your next turn and then swing over the Witch and get rid of it. Or you could even Normal Summon Witch or Fossil Dine and you don't even have to negate it. You could just attack over and have the Fossil Dine negate the Special Summon on the next turn. So I, I think I need the monster. I will let this go. All right, uh, I am going to banish uh, Esper Girl. And that's it for me. I will reveal Fossil Dina Pachycephalo. Jesus Christ. All right, stand I've by never heard anyone actually say the full name. Uh, okay, we will banish the top card of our deck face down, and I will special summon TG Warwolf here. That's nuts. All right, we're going to go into... Oh, who cares, honestly? Truly, who cares? Wonder Magician targeting the back row, and um... we'll grab the remove from play card. I'll chain it. It's Fiendish Chain. All right. Sadly, the remove from play. The Wonder Magician's cracked here because this is one thing I learned about Wonder Magician not too long. Um, it says if this card is on the field is destroyed, draw one card. It just has to be destroyed. So technically, I guess it says on the field though, but like say if there's like a bottomless or something, you still get to, like it doesn't have to go to graveyard to resolve basically, which is kind of cool. Um, but also this Venus Chain is kind of sus. Like, I mean, he has to chain it, but if that's a set monster of, like, it could be, like, a Warwolf or something, he flips someone's that, and he can just sink eight. You know, it's kind of good. The card was Creature Swap. Because it's a tuner. <laughs> uh, so I will now Creature Swap. Yep. You you can have this one. Uh, I will so flip summon Striker and normal summon I'm Serene. I'm done. I'm done. Nice. I think he had game either way, but he could have synchroed with the... Uh, 
the Wonder Joseph Magician, and it might have been better. Trap dust shoot, and I saw the writing on the wall. <laughs> that was the god hand, if I have ever seen it, for psychics. I mean, it, it probably could have been better, but in the context of what my hand looked like, that was unwinnable. There, there's no shot I was winning that game. It, it was a it was a pretty killer open, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. This one, not bad either. <laughs> okay. Got another duality. Yeah, Kick yeah. things off here. Ooh. Okay. Okay, those three are good cards instead of three bad ones. That's interesting. Those are... Pretty good. I will elect to take. I think I'm gonna go for the fiendish chain. You gotta have vanities already. There's just what, no buddy? Way. Maybe, maybe I just value fiendish chain over vanities yeah, yeah, so course, much. Of course, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna normal. <laughs> which is also why normal is the guardian, which negates monster effects. <laughs> Summon guardian. Yes. I'm going to set yes. three cards. Ooh. I love you. I do not like that play. Setting three is super risky. Like, you got Heavy Storm last turn. What happens if you get Heavy Storm this turn? You know what I'm saying? Like, you could just lose the game right here for doing that. That's pretty bad. Yo. And end phase, I will reveal Patchy Cephalo and pass. That's Why doesn't he say Fossil okay. Dino? It's actually triggering One, me. Two, just say Fossil Dino. Why say Patchy Poo 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 or whatever? Stand by. Main one. Also fine. Um, I gotta get through three back row. That's terrifying. Uh, I will run out Kawaki Meru Sandman. Uh, we'll try to go to battle here. Let's hit with Guardian. Anything on attack deck? Nope. Uh, it is Serene Psychic Witch. I will try to trigger the effect. That is fine by me, buddy. We are going to. Why? Just negate it. It's the one purpose this thing has. You got the Sandman. Who cares? Banish a. It's actually just so much better to negate that. Esper girl. And then we'll try 19 on the sand. I'm gonna prison this one. He's either getting banished or he's going <laughs> to the your graveyard. Pick, buddy. <laughs> uh, I guess I will negate it so he goes to the graveyard. He's probably Sounds slightly right. more useful there. Yep. Uh, second main. You definitely want him engraved because of Gigantes and Solidarity, stuff like that. And that's all I got. Go ahead. All right. But maybe he's not out solidarity uh, too. By, I guess will... all vanities here. When are you doing this? Uh, I will do this in. So does Serene activate Serene to special does summon? Activate, yes. Okay, I will use it in response to the activation of Selene. Kind of shitty. I do have to MST here in that case. Uh, okay, I got nothing to that. That's fine. I wanted the hot two for one so. Bad. I know you did. That's why you were asking. <laughs> I will try to Esper girl here. Do I care if you get a little plus one here? Uh, this is fine. I don't care. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh. Uh, sorry, it's supposed to be let face me, down. Let me rephrase well. that. Ooh, that could be anything. That could have literally <laughs> true. Been. We'll go to main one. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna normal Tengu. Great, that's, that's a real sick. card, isn't it? Um, I'll warning the Tengu to try to stop the chain. Good warning. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Um, I'm gonna set one, and I will pass turn. Like I can warning the synchro, but I just don't think that does me any good. Uh, main. The Grand Mole here isn't that bad. Issue is he would play into Torrential, and getting Torrential would feel really shitty here on your Grand Mole. Grand Mole would be kind of nice because he could bounce Esper Girl, and then it would turn off this card. So, and Esper Girl in hand feels like shit. So, it could be good, but I, I, you almost could make a case for Randy spacing one of the back rows. But since the deck runs um, Miracle Synchro Fusion, that's also really punishing. So I almost feel like you have to just swing in with Guardian and do nothing else. I, especially after Deep Prison was already played, I feel like that's your safest play here. In one, I'm gonna try Grand Mole here. I'm gonna activate Torrential. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, we're gonna Get activate to trigger your Esper. Esper Girl. Yep. I've got a back row in the Imperm column. Go ahead. Stand by me. Hmm. Puts me in a weird position. Uh, let's go Duality. Sure. Ooh, those are pretty We good. are not close on Avarice. We are just not remotely close. Hey, you're not That's bad on Avarice. Three of five is pretty close. Probably better than anything else on here. Uh, we'll take Avarice. I think Avarice makes sense. I think that makes sense. Uh, and then we will just set one and pass. Okay. Uh, we'll draw. Stand by main. Uh, you have so many good hits. Uh, let's space the back row. Hmm. It is solemn warning. Her. Ooh. Bad. Uh, I will try for Patchy Cephalo here. I doubt this is going to connect, though. It is Psychic Jumper. I'm yeah, the space on the back row. I've, I don't know why he did that then instead of earlier when there were two. Because if you're trying to play, like, you should be considering Torrential on that last turn. So if you're playing around it, you should just space then. Because, like, if you're not going to respect the fact that there could be a set Miracle Synchro Fusion then you might as well just slam it on the turn where you're trying to, like, get massive advantage from a Grand Mole effect. 
Because at the very least, he would have had to solemn warning the Granville. But uh, now it's like, yeah. Correct. All right, I'll take three. Uh, I know you have Avarice and the card off of Esper Girl in hand. That's going to do it for me. Stand by me. Uh, I will tribute Jumper for Sidra. That works. That is not a special summon. This is what, nine? Yeah, I'll take it. Second main, I'll set one. And back to you. Not looking good. I'll just pass. I'll get in. It's fine. Uh, set one more. Back to you. Uh oh, yeah. He can't really dark hole because he has Sandman. Now he... Oh, I don't even know how I feel about this. I feel like this is really sus. Isn't his last set card Fiendish Chain? I feel like he wants to chain the Cyber Dragon and just prevent him from attacking. Because he can't even summon Sang Sandman right now. Uh, also... I don't know why he sided in this card against this deck. It is actually piss useless. I guarantee you this card doesn't resolves on nothing this game, especially since Esper Girl has already been used. It's like the one for one you can do it in this matchup, but this card is so useless against Psychics, it's not even funny. Uh <laughs> well, I can't really afford to take these hits anymore, so I'll dark hole. <clears throat> That's rough. Puts the Avarice online, but honestly, there's not Ooh. much I can do. Normal Sandman. I will go to battle for 19. Uh this is so bad. Like, if MBT doesn't do anything, which I hope he reads that this, like, there's a good chance that Simo's out of rocks, right? If he reads that, then he could just, <laughs> then he could just let this go and then take the free plus, right? Even then, I think you could wait a turn and see if you get a free plus off of this. Because, uh, like... This is, I don't know, it's so bad. You cannot summon these without something else, usually. Unless you really think they're going to burn back on it. Uh, uh, I hate doing this one for one, but Mirror Force. <laughs> I'll negate it! Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Stand by me. Yep. Avarice. Nice. And you were complaining about the Avarice, Joseph. No, I, I it, it was just such a powerful deterrent of getting a couple hits in with uh, the, the boy. Yep. Uh... Weird draw, very strange draw, less strange draw. Double Esper Girl, please. Uh, well, it's TG Warwolf. That's frightening. This and is now, what, 12? Yeah, we are just playing the sure. Endless Conga line. Back to you. They have been assembled. I will draw. I will normal Kawaki Meru Sandman. Uh, this is not Sandman. A wall, whatever. Spell effect? Yeah, sure. Seven. I'll take it. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get this far. Uh, I will go to the end phase. Would you like to trigger your Warwolf? Yeah. Uh, let me grab. <laughs> Be cool if I could get Warwolf here. We're just going to grab so bad. Striker. <laughs> you idiot. You think you're going to special summon a monster? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Striker's his only target anyway, but it's honestly fine. I mean, you're look how hard he's minus. Oh, oh, Al, oh my God. Uh, I I ripped Tangu, so <laughs> great. Uh, I'll try it. I have chain, so I'm not dead. Oh, it's chain. Okay, I was like, I don't know. It's got to be something crazy. Uh, back to you. I was considering it on the Sidra, but for oh, all the good, that's such a bad top deck. Uh, I'll set one. You have striker. Rip Tengu. Am I in immediate danger? No, I'll pass. Stand by me. you are. Hip. Normal striker? He's a tuner. Uh, this is probably bad. I think I have to judgment striker. Wow, that is very ridiculous. And also ridiculous is that I get to dark hole my own tent <laughs> <for day. laughs> Nice. I have max C. I'm oh, not Oh, we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> if it's Battle Fader. <laughs> yeah, this is why you don't side max C. Like, honestly... He probably sided out. It seems like he sided out the solidarities to put in the maxis, but that's like a terrible plan. Like, I mean, if anything, like put in Thunder Kings or something because you're going against like a small TG engine. But that if that maxi was Thunder King, think about how much better it would have been if he, you know, didn't just think maxi's broken, so he put it in his deck. Unga boonga. <laughs> I do duality. Fuck. Oh Jesus! What a strange one. Yeah, that you was weird. You want to run it back? You want to do the yeah? Game let's through? run it back. I want to try one more. Bam, 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 bam. I have to get at least one game. I refuse to believe that I cannot win one game against this. Maybe I haven't like embraced the stun factor of this deck. Like maybe I'm just playing it improperly. But listen, Alex, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I know a lot of the time it feels as if we haven't truly given ourselves to our deck, and that's why we're losing. Uh, I don't think I don't think anything's gonna fix this one, buddy. <laughs> I don't think so. That hand's not bad. This is pretty good. 
We got the Solidarity. Looks like maybe he decided to pivot back out of the Maxi again. Maybe he's thinking because he was going second, he needed the Maxi in. But now this hand actually looks nuts. Either. Um, I am going to... Sequencing of this matters. I'm going to normal summon Kwaki Meru Guardian. Uh, surprise. Shocker. Uh, and then I'm going to set three and pass. Uh, very different than my other turns because I didn't open Pot of Duality. Go ahead. This is fine. Who are we? Who are oh, we I'm sorry. Eventus? Sorry. I have to reveal Fossil Dyna for like the 900th game. Yeah, you have just <laughs> glued to your hand. All right. There's three of them. All right. Well, this is different than the rest of them in that you actually have a, a guy and back row and I don't have like heavy. So, <laughs> you know, maybe we could make something happen here. Uh, let's go uh, Special Striker. Sure. Special Warwolf. Sure. Normal Tengu. Barf. Um. Yep. Tengu Striker. We'll go Bryo. Tengu effect? Yes. Why go Bryo there? I feel like... It just makes way more sense. I mean, I guess... I guess if you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Bryo's fine. I guess the only reason that makes sense for it is to avoid losing, like, Warwolf Striker for no reason, because he could just negate the Wonder Magician. But... Yeah, I guess that's fine. But he could technically... He could technically just use Guardian to negate the Tengu effect. I feel like that'd be worth it. Because then, like, he can use back row, like, Mirror Force or something on the Brynak. And then he can... Um, he can just summon Fossil Dyna with Solidarity next turn. That's pretty good. I imagine that there is a fiendish chain in the back row. Let's go for Bryo here. Uh, we are pitching going, and target. We are going to or pitch target jumper. Let's let's target the guardian. I actually think I sack guardian to kill the Brio. Sure. Uh, we'll try combat here. I will mirror force this. Okay. Um, we'll go Tangu. I'll take the seventeen. That's fine. Sure. Uh, we. Uh, second main, I'll set one, and then end phase will resolve Warwolf. I'll go grab Striker. Back to you. I have a plan. I have a plan. I will activate Solidarity. Oh, yes! This is a little thing, but you should summon the Fossil Dino first, then activate Solidarity. Because in the weird event that this is bottomless, that plays around it, and also, um... Your opponent might not do anything about the normal summon of Fossil Dyna if it's just slammed with nothing else on it. So, like, it's like a confusing play, right? So, I will normal Pachycephalo. Well, he's fucking <laughs> huge, yes. 2,000 attack matter. Pachycephalo. Get in there. I have a Dim Prison. I have Dark Bribe. Oh, I was kind of just expecting Judgment. Okay, how do I out a 2,000 attack point Pachycephalo? We will learn here today together. And then I will set an addition. Oh, he's just gambling heavy again. Just imagine this heavy gets slammed after Dark Bribe resolves. You feel so bad. Additional <laughs> one in main phase two and throw to you. I will set one and pass turn. So now you have Striker and... Like, there was no reason to set that deep prison. I think you just leave these two with the Fossil Dyna. And that's fine enough. If you if you lose two cards to heavy, that feels a lot better than losing three. And that's, that's it. it, I think. That's it. And that's probably what you just said. All right. I'll oh, that's sick. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's that's, the boy. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a right good one. on time. 2K to the face. Yeah. You don't have gores. Go ahead. Uh, I will. He can't gores. <laughs> normal silent psychic wizard. Uh, you have psychics because you pitched jump. Uh, yeah. It's fine. Combat. Uh, I'm just trying to try to get the jumper. Oh, that actually doesn't do anything. Combat's fine. Uh, I will MST the solidarity. Why would you mm. do that? That's well, so I would like to That's not fine. lose the game. I may regardless. I have D prison for this. Yeah, D thankfully. prison's nice. Okay. Um, sure. Back to you. Draw. This is kind of sick because I can stick Grand Mole now. 19 here? Or 20? Uh, 21. And then I have a back room. Go ahead. Come on. Heavy Storm Dark Hole. <laughs> uh, we will normal Serene Psychic Witch. That's fine. I will try for the Packy. I think I have to Fiendish Chain this, sadly. Wow. Uh, Yeah, I get it. You're trying to draw like a guy. You can yeah. Grand Mold a... Oh, man, that's so bad. There's no way that's the play. All right, back to you. Draw. It's a guy, but it's not the oh. guy I want. <laughs> it, is a, it, is a, it is a lad. So we'll bounce. Yep. And then 24 here. And then I'll throw to you. Uh, draw for turn. Stand by main. Which? 
Sure. Wow. Oh, it's you get kind of awkward for him, though. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, I don't know what he does about here. this. I can go Grand Mole Bounce. That seems pretty good. Uh, you know what also seems... It's just game, yeah. He just slams the Sandman. He can swing over and then swing for game because this doesn't special summon until the next turn. Seems good winning the game. I will normal Sandman. Yes. Five and 12. 500. Yep. And that will do it. Woo! Okay, I mean, I didn't think it was that GGs. fucking hard to win with this deck, but oh my god, all monsters, jeez. Wait, yeah, uh, I can see that hand, hold on. 12. Yep. I mean, I didn't think it was that- Huh. Why didn't he just special summon Striker? He killed the Fossil Dino, right? So, like, he could have just special summoned Striker. He could have gone Striker Warwolf into Wonder Magician. I guess, like, Grand Mal outs the Wonder Magician. But he could have just gone Striker Warwolf and just put him on board. They can search one another, right? It's not a big deal. Just to have some defenses so you don't lose. I don't know why he, like, played that so passively. That's really weird. It's fucking hard to win with this deck, but... Oh, my God. All monsters. Jeez. Yeah, uh, no, it's a rough one. Well, that's the deck. Uh <laughs> Yeah. That, that, that's right. I mean, it's, if it stuns, it's great. And if not, the deck is fucking terrible. Uh, solidarity, I will say, makes a, fit, a huge difference in how, like, beefy your guys are. Like, getting patchy to 2k is insane. So, yeah, I think that there's a lot to talk about with regard to your deck. Um, Rock Stun was, like, a known quantity for a long time. But a as, you know, re evidenced by the fact that we're playing it on fucking jank, it just really <laughs> didn't have tops to its name. <laughs> and the reason is pretty clear. Um, if you stick something, or if you stick a solidarity, you're in a fantastic position. If you stick enough back row, like three or more, you're in a fantastic position. But to do that, you need to have drawn a monster and three back row and an additional monster because all the Koakai Mairus require you to reveal another one. So unless- yep. Guys, we need another pronunciation debate in the comments. He just said Koakai Mairus. I'm pretty sure it's Kwaki Miru, right? Like, am I crazy? I need I need you guys to I need you guys to tell me because if that's the case, then yet again another card I've been pronouncing wrong my entire life. <laughs> yep. You're opening exactly exactly like a fossil dino. You do not intend to summon plus a Koakai Mairu that lines up mm, profitably against your opponent's game plan, plus three back row, then you're yep. kind of fucked. Solidarity is a great card and lets your Koakai Mairus basically live forever against like opponents like Cyber Dragons, uh, Synchro Monsters that would otherwise eat them alive. But playing so is a piece of back row that isn't necessarily a response to your opponent's game plan and also isn't a rock monster. So it just yep. doesn't line up well against anything. The games you win with Rock Stun are the ones where you land like a Pachycephalo and protect it for a couple of turns. You tempo your opponent out with a Grand Mole. You're maybe able to go for a big push with a Gaia Plate. Uh, but there's a lot of them where your opponent just goes one for one with your back row every single turn for three turns and you get your ass run over, like what happened in the other games. Basically, yeah. Like, it, it mm, I mean, to a degree, yeah. I mean, that, that's like the, relatively the reason why the deck loses. But also, again, like, I, I think Simo did play suboptimally. Like, he just needed to use his Guardian to negate the Serene Psychic Witch, or like in game one, he needed to not attack the Serene Psychic Witch until he could use Guardian to negate it. Because that's like the main playmaking card in the deck. And then in reality, the smart way to play against Psychics is oftentimes to not let them resolve those effects because that's how you lose. So like, I do think Psychics is the better deck overall, but I, I really do think if Simo played better, he would have been able to win had he like used his effects more optimally. Like Guardian... Maybe it's like going from like a modern Yu-Gi-Oh take where Guardian like needs to negate something like key. If this is like they were saying this was played in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't know. I don't know the deck, but like in in like 2011 standards, you really just want to try to get value out of it in the best way you can. So in reality, like it's kind of like the same thing as like a Doom Caliber Knight, right? Like you want to swing into your opponent's Sangin, or you want to like you know hit like a recruiter, you know like a Emmer's Blade or something. So hitting a witch and negating it is like really good. And that, that makes a psychic player feel terrible. I'm not going to lie. Like witch resolving is like one of the most important things in the psychic deck. So yeah, I, I just think it was like a bit suboptimal on Simo's uh, end, which like caused it to be a bit awkward. Also, all of his hands looked almost exactly the same, even though there's like, you know, gigantes and like 
Call the Haunted and all kinds of other cards in here that kind of make the deck have like interesting interactions. Like for example, like <laughs> your opponent can like Monster Reborn and you could like, wait, I don't remember if you can special summon Fossil Dino or not. You can like Chain Call and Fossil Dino. I think you can. Pretty sure you can special summon. Yeah, yeah, you, you can special summon Fossil Dino. So like, yeah, you can like Monster Reborn, Chain Call, bring back Fossil Dino. It's kind of like weird, cool interactions like that. Um, but yeah. If you can establish initiative and you have like card advantage over your opponent, then when you're sacking off your Sandmans or your walls to negate traps and spells, and even like your guardians to negate monster effects, then you feel a bit better about it because then it's like you're trading in a more profitable way because you're just denying your opponent of the resource. But like even then, it still just feels bad that you lose so much tempo on your win condition, which is actually killing them in order to like be able to seal out the game. And it is neat because Patchy Cephalo has been around forever, right? This is a card that saw plenty of side deck play because it's literally just like a dark hole for special summon monsters, plus Vanity's emptiness on legs, which if you think about it, it's kind of crazy. It needs a lot of things to go right. And Solidarity does help that because getting a chonky fossil dying Patchy Cephalo is pretty good. A lot of things need to go right. It is nice you get to play incidental synergy cards like Gigantis. You get to play Grand Mole, which is, you know, a rock, which doesn't really yeah. come up ever when people play Grand Mole, but it's just funny. It works with this deck. And uh, also Gaia Plate, which is like the rock. I was really hoping to see the Gaia Plate, man. Like, th this card's sick. <laughs> it's like, you're playing Rockstun and you drop this boy on your opponent. They're like, holy shit. You just never really see it coming. Especially if you, like, normal a Sandman first and then Gaia Plate. You can just donk him. It feels pretty sick. It it's a really cool card. Rock BLS, but absolutely awful by comparison. So, you know, yeah. it's what it is. Your deck uh, is a lot cooler by comparison because you get to do a lot more fun stuff. And I'm sad we didn't get to see you like do like just really pop off, especially because you're playing like Miracle Synchro Fusion. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this list is strange. Um, ever since the, uh, you know, uh, historic uh grand what what is it grand soil psychic list yep, uh, yep people have kind of understood intuitively that there's something there with like serene psychic witch you know it, it never dies uh it cycles an esper girl so it gets you advantage esper girl's a tuner so you can convert it into powerful synchro monsters there's also a lot of cards in here that saw absolutely no play historically despite being really strong especially in limited environments silent psychic wizard uh destructotron uh unbelievable cards uh, in uh, like Battle Pack 3, True. Um, but uh, largely overlooked in actual. He never mentions Jumper. This card's so good. Every time I play Psychics, I like, I drop a Jumper at least once a match and it feels so good. It like wins me so many matches. Just from like, you're stalling out with Witches and then your opponent puts something big on the field and you just like, they swing into a Witch and you have another Psychic and you just go, all right, well, here comes my Jumper. Or you like normal a Witch and E-Telly for Jumper and then make a big play with that. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh. It's kind of frustrating because early psychic stuff is really interesting and there are a lot of neat options for it and it really didn't get its day in the sun. Uh, and like e telly is legal. <laughs> so right. um, it's hard to build a deck focused around psychics post like Mind Master getting shot into the abyss. Uh, but I think this does a pretty good job without committing fully uh, like something like Grand Soil would. Uh, it allows you to use cards like TG Striker and Warwolf to get back into the game to preserve your life total. I maybe would have liked to have seen like a trag in this list. There seemed like a lot of positions where like as long as I lasted another turn, I was winning. Um, but I do really like the concept. I think it's super cool. And I mean, you just can't... <laughs> You can't give me a deck that's playing Miracle Synchro Fusion and think that I'm not going to have a great time with it. Uh, it does get to summon the greatest monster of all time, Ultimate Axon Kicker, which Hell unfortunately yeah. uh, is kind of a fucking piece of shit. It's actually really not. <laughs> what? Very okay, no, that card, this card is so good. And the, like, if you think about like within like what 2011 can do, there's like very few cards that actually out this. Like Deep Prison is like the only thing, like Deep Prison, like Compulsory or something like that. Um, but those are, like, less common back rows for a, a lot of the different matchups. Like, this card hits the field, it's it's sticking. You can't be destroyed by card effects, and when it attack, it, like, gets piercing, and when it destroys a monster by battle, you gain life points. All those effects are honestly nuts. Like, you gain life points equal to the destroyed monster's attack. Like, this card is so good. Like, in, in all honesty, how I approach playing Psychics is if I see Miracle Synchro Fusion early, and I'm realistically, I'm not gonna just make a, a random Synchro, usually I'll just set it with a back row as a bluff to try to get a Heavy Storm. So then their Heavy Storm's just a one for one, and then after that, you can kind of play more aggressive with your back row, right? Um, and then when 
like you save them for like you wait and like hope to see the second one later in the game and then like usually at any point if you can make a synchro even if it's like slightly less optimal um at the time if it deals with your opponent's board i just make the magical android or whatever the psychic synchro is just to try to make this card live because if ultimate axon kicker hits the field i feel like i always win when this card like when like miracle synchro fusion resolves it's a really really powerful card you just have to know how to play it and play like with it usually in games two and three i'll side one out in all honesty um because like that's one of the better cards to just cut because like i said you only really need to see one during the game and it's usually you want to see it later in the game after you've kind of like had time to fill your grave with psychics and like synchro monsters um but setting it as a bluff it's like one of the best bluffs because if your opponent blind spaces it you feel amazing <laughs> like that, that that set effect is actually really good very good at all uh yeah. it, it, it can't be destroyed by card effects and uh that's pretty much it uh, but uh, it's a very fun. He's ignoring uh, deck, a lot of those uh, effects, to say man. the least. And Serene Psychic, which uh, is a historically overlooked card, I'm glad we got to show it off a little. But I think this match really showcased why both of these decks uh, didn't really see any crossover success in like the YCS level. So guys, that's again. I really feel like Psychics didn't see success in the competitive level because one, I don't think people know how to build them or how to play them. Um, and I don't think a lot of people really experimented with them, uh, historically. I think if more people experiment, more experimented with psychics in like modern day, like 2011. So like in our like Tengu Mania tournaments and stuff like that, we'll put a link to that discord in the description below. If you want to come play the best Yu-Gi-Oh format. Um, but yeah, experiment with psychics. It's, it's a really fun deck. And, and like, I prefer the, like that build they're using. That was mine. Like the, the TG psychics. That's my prefer preferred way to play it. I think like. The synergies in that deck feel so good and every time i play it I, I feel like it's like one of the strongest decks of the format like i always just feel like there's always crazy options and you can just stall indefinitely until something good happens so i really like that deck um but yeah ultimately i just think that um they're they're kind of underrating it kind of underrating it but if, if people played it modernly they, they would enjoy it. Um, Rockstun, I, one one theory I had with Rockstun was, hey, let's uh, let's put in, like, three Reckless Greed. I think Reckless Greed could help solve some of the problems Rockstun has, and even Safe Zone. I think Safe Zone could maybe be helpful, too, because um, both those cards are legal in 2011. But, you know, Reckless Greed could be something where you kind of play to see two of them, and then as soon as you do, you look to gain advantage off of them, so then you can um, kind of, like, fill your hand and, like, maintain rocks in it. So, like, because one thing I noticed about Rockstun is it just doesn't really have a good way to draw more cards or to like replenish the hand so i feel like something like reckless greed could be a decent answer for that deck but i haven't really tested it so but anyway i think that's gonna wrap it up for this video um thank you so much for watching guys i need <laughs> i need cmon mbt to keep doing this otherwise like i said put put some in the comments let me know if there's any other content you want to see me react to want to see me look at um make sure you guys subscribe but yeah anyway Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you guys have a great time doing today.